All right, so welcome everybody. Uh, Sean Marzoli here. I'm the co-founder here at Acceleran, uh, alongside the other co-founder, Gary Rodding. Uh, we have a couple uh, execs here as well. We've got Gannon Rodding and Bambi Weevil. And we're looking forward to going through something that you know we feel really strongly about, which is making sure that our customer's customer has a frictionless experience with with our customer um, and our software provides that so we're going to take you guys through this a bit and show you what we're talking about let's go to this process slide i think that's the next one yeah you want me to jump in here do it okay yeah so there's a lot of pieces to the customer engagement uh um process and, and we're just going to focus on one today and and that, that's really on the process of uh making an appointment <laughs> sounds easy but it's it's not <laughs> for a lot of customers and, it's a, and it is a major source of friction and this first slide basically shows the steps in it now we're not going to talk about um the interest need part and it's it always kind of interest to me you know especially in the alignable group i mean there's a tremendous amount of focus on you know, the marketing aspects and SEO and things like that, that, that are designed to create interest and, and to get customers, you know, to your website. So we're not going to talk about that. We do that stuff. It's important. Um, but what we're going to talk about is, you know, once they get there, you need to capture them, right? And the whole concept behind um, this automation is doing it in a way that they want to be, want to interact with you and not restricting them. So, Currently, in most cases, the appointment request is going to come in. And the way I've divided this up is, you know, kind of these are the, the, you know, the four steps we'll talk about. Appointment request, scheduling resources, the appointment itself, and, you know, getting ready for that. And then the last step is, you know, kind of a satisfaction, um, you know, check. And on the top, are, you know, just some of the basic issues that, you feel like as a company that you deal with in this process, friction points. And then on the bottom part is just some of the basics of consumer issues. Um, if you saw any way the post in, in Alignable, you know, I actually, I'm having fun with chat GPI, GPT. If you haven't tried it, uh, it's kind of a hoot, you know, and, and you, you know, it's, it, I basically bounced off some of the things I was, you know, telling folks, I tell folks and asked chat GPT what it thought. And that was, it actually came back and it was almost mirrored uh, our thoughts in terms of the friction and, and uh, the, the idea of automated appointment setting. So I thought that was kind of fun. I suggest you folks, you know, do the same kinds of things with it. I think you'll find it interesting, but so as you know, an example, you know, in the appointment request process, Typically now, you know, you, the request coming to you, the for, a form being filled out from a website, uh, which generates then, um, you know, maybe an email request also, and then or phone. Those are, you know, really the two basic ways that, that people are collecting um, appointment requests. And the problem for customers is, you know, well, one, I'll talk phone first. Everybody hates, not everybody, well, most people today <laughs> uh, hate talking on the phone and making appointments on the phone, getting put on hold, all the getting mailboxes that are full. I don't know how many times that happens. Um, huge friction point. Um, and then oftentimes in the first phone call, it doesn't get resolved. They have to call you back, you know, so phone is one and it's, it's a high source of friction. And the other is the forums and, you know, and or sending an email in. I got to tell you, I, I probably have sent in, you know, for requests for information, maybe 10 forms. And I bet I have only got one response, which always cracks me up. I, I It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and if I email, you know, again, it's slow. It's it's not reliable. So that's that's from a customer perspective. On the other side, on a, from the company point of view, I think you have the same, same basic concepts. Phone is an interruption. Right. You're doing whatever the person, most of us don't have the luxury of having someone just sitting there answering the phone. So it's either going into a voicemail box initially, uh, you know, automated attendant. Um, but in, in, inevitably, it's setting up a phone tag situation. Um, and so, you know, for a lot of small businesses, that means uh, especially, you know, we're really focused on service industries. And that's both from a trade service 
all the way through professional services, but companies that are providing some type of a service, um, you know, they end up having to do, try to make calls on in evenings. And that's again, a source of friction. Uh, so that, that current process can be, and typically is a real source of friction in getting customers, my, our experience. And then we go into the second stage, which is scheduling resources. Um, you know, for the, for the, um, customer side, less of an issue because they're not the ones worrying about scheduling resources, just availability, right? They just have to be, it has to be a convenience and, and availability is all they really care about there. On the business side, though, it becomes, you know, fairly significant issue. Um, you've got uh, limited resources, typically, you know, resources that have different skill sets. Um, if you're doing like a service business, um, trade service type business, you're going to maybe have geographic issues that you have to deal with. And then you've just got people being whether they're available or not. And maybe they don't work all, you know, uh, eight hours a day. Maybe they work half days. Maybe they don't work all, you know, Monday through Friday, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that's another that's a huge friction point for. And, and it's probably the biggest reason why we hear people not wanting to do automated uh, scheduling. I can't do it. My business is too complicated. You don't understand, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's a big issue. And then we get to the appointment side. And again, the, to me, it's, this is about communications. On the business side, the biggest frustration is no-shows and people not commit, you know, not not um, being prepared for the appointment. You know, maybe there were some things they that you wanted them to do and they haven't done. So those are issues that have to be, you know, dealt with. On the customer side, it's just communications, you know. When are they coming? Who's coming? You know, those kinds of things. And then the final piece is the referrals, uh, the satisfaction portion from a company point of view. We're looking for ratings and referrals. Uh, we want to want to get feedback from the customer that we can use to propagate and get more. Well, and of course, we're making sure that they're satisfied. Uh, from the customer point of view, I think they just want to feel appreciated. Uh, they want some type of follow up and feeling appreciated. So those to me are kind of the, you know, and obviously, you know, in this half hour, we're kind of gearing towards, we can't go deep dive in all these things, but there's the kinds of things that I want to be able to, us to walk through today to kind of see how we can, we have over, over our um, years of experience in doing this now have generated um, a process for dealing with these things. So, these are kind of things that we're going to talk through, what companies don't want to use, uh, uh, why they don't want to use customer self-scheduling. We'll talk, go through, show some of the ways that we overcome those, why they do like it, and the increase in efficiency, eliminating phone tag, those things, and then what, what the benefits are for the customer side. Uh, just setting expectations for this whole concept. Um, I, you know, I think nothing's perfect. It's not intended to be perfect. Um, we have um, systems that gen that work for company. We have one company that has six cities, probably uh, 90 tech field technicians, um, and has two or three different automated systems in place for, for getting appointments self-scheduled. Probably has uh, reduced his head count for that area by 50%. Um, and has a really, you know, a very strong, you know, response from customers for it. So on the other side of the coin, you know, a lot of our customers are, you know, two or three people um, in the company. And uh, it just makes their life so much more efficient. They're wearing multiple hats, but it's not perfect. So, you know, I think you can, uh, you know, really our experience has shown immediately, you know, kind of a 50% reduction in telephone and form appointments, um, a 78 70 80 percent success rate meaning that an appointment has uh, that they request that is acceptable there's an acceptable one for them and you and it, it, it results in an, uh, an appointment um and i want to one caveat that in a second um 95 of all requests result in an appointment um and it, here's where the caveat comes in i'm talking about appointments for a service call uh, there's a whole nother category, which we live in, which is appointments for sales calls or demos. Uh, there, uh, because of what <laughs> the societal what mode we're in and whatever, uh, the success rate is a lot less. When I say success rate, them actually showing up for the appointment. Why? I don't know. 
uh, but that's the world we live in. So 95% of all requests for it, something that they are looking for you are, are generally resulted in employment. Um, and th this is the other benefit. Overall, there's there's generally an increase in overall appointments because you're not losing the opportunities. And that usually results in a, you know, a, a 10 to 20% increase in overall appointments. And the last thing I said, even when it doesn't work, you're still gathering information from the customer and then you are still now in a situation where you have created a, as a minimum a digital communi communications path to them for the current business and for future business. So these are the things we're going to basically going through. I'm not going to go down the list here. I'm just going to jump into the demo and it's not even a demo. I'm just going to cover simple um, things that we do in solving some of the problems. And so with that, I'm going to jump out of here once I figure out how to do that. Here we go. And we'll go into, into here. And just going to show you how we kind of address some of these issues and, and starting off with just, you know, the ease of a of, of starting this process with a customer. OK, because, it, you know, for them to do this and in, in introducing technology to them, you know, it does it does require uh, it to be, you know, something that's pretty easy to use. And, and we have pride ourselves on our software as just that being very simple and easy to use. So it typically starts with one of two things, either a contact us button uh, on your on a website or a contact us in an email um, or a you know on a, a social media account. And that's that's going to uh, basically take them into a customer calendar. Uh, this is an example. This is just our demo calendar. Uh, I'm going to show you another one in a second as well. Um, these are customizable. You can change the look and feel. Uh, you can put um, a um, billboard over here to put different uh, offers, more more help uh, descriptions. Ours, when we pop up, we recommend having a you know placard like this that gives the the three steps to getting the appointment right away. And close that. And one of the reasons we have success for is with customers is we create um, filters for them, and the, either one or two, and I'll show you a, a two filter example as well, um, filters for them so that they can select a appointment type that fits their needs. And it also helps the company uh, by giving them the ability to create appointments. For instance, let me just show you this, a, a geographical one. I created two appointments, one an appliance service call in Philadelphia or a service call in Wayne area. Now, you obviously could have 10 of these um, you know, with and, and all kinds of different uh, uh, descriptions that would fit specific needs of your business. But this is then a way for them to filter what type of an appointment they're requesting. And when they click on the search, it's only going to show available uh, availability in, you know, for that for that uh, particular appointment type. So, if, for instance, this particular one, there's no availability on these Mondays. And when they go in and they click uh, availability, uh, then it's going to ask them to click this, uh, an appointment time. So, and if there's not the right appointment time for them there, they can go back um, and uh, and pick another date. Um, so this eliminates obviously the the overbooking, double booking. You can only uh, click on uh, an, a time slot where there is actual a, an availability. And I'll show you in a minute once what happens once they go ahead and select an appointment, um, but because there's that's then where the communications, the automations then gets uh, kicks in, and keeps them informed, and of course informs the business of what's going on from there. Let me just show you the other option uh, with multiple filters. I'll put this up real quick. So this was. Um, you know, if you're a service business, it's a trade service, you don't want them probably selecting who their technician is going to be. But if you're a professional service company, um, you're, you know, have, uh, I don't know what I did for appointments in here, but I said, okay, I have a tax return preparation appointment and I have an introductory business review consultation. Um, so that if I, you know, you may have five people in your office that do this, but if I'm, you know, I want the same person that did my tax taxes the last five years. So I can come in here and then select. Now, you're only going to be able to select the person that um, does that particular 
type of um, uh, function. So in this case, John Smith. And then you did search and then it would show availability. And again, you would cl click on and see the availability and the time slots that are available there. Um, I think that's, um, you know, from the customer point of view, so they, all they do is fill out the form, submit it. And again, once they do that, again, you've now collected that, you've created a customer in our system, they're in your CRM, and you now have um, the ability to market to them in the future. I wanted to shift then to the other part. I think you may have noticed there was a block time scheduling in this particular, I'll show you again real quick just so I can highlight that. In this case, there's block scheduling and we have basically created morning appointments, afternoon appointments, and then emergency appointments on certain days. And again, you, and I'll show you the, the blocks, but you can have you know very many different types of, of blocks in here based upon the service type. And that's, we set those up. Um, in our settings, and there's there's two types. Um, this is the first, which is blocks scheduling. So this is basically you set the block sizes, you can give them names, you can overlap them, um, you can have them geographically based. You, there's all kinds of uh, you know things that you can do with these um, in terms of, uh, and these are what customers will see. If you didn't put a name in here, they're just gonna see the, the time frames. So whichever you prefer. And you can name them anything you want to, obviously. But the key part of this and what makes it so flexible was we then create appointment types and then connect them uh, to both resources um, as well as to the to the time blocks and the amount of time that it takes. So let's just look at that Wayne one we were looking at. So in this case, um, and I want to point out one other thing while I'm here. If you see this, I hope you can see where I'm circling. It says for inter internal use only. So you can have blocks uh, schedule uh, types that uh, appointment types that are internal only. Uh, we could use it for scheduling a conference room, you know. But so, uh, but you may like if it's again back to a service business that does installations. You don't want the customer selecting an installation time. That's you're going to schedule that based upon your requirements. So you would click that as internal only, and then that will not show up on the customer calendar. Only on your internal dispatch calendar, and I'll show you that in a second. So you name it, you say, you put in a time frame. So you could have, you know, service call Wayne area short, service call Wayne area long, you know, or based upon, or based upon what type of service it is, you say it's a two hour service call, another one might be four hours. You can set that to any length that you want it to be. And then you also attach to it, again, this gives you all kinds of flexibility. You can attach, what type of appointment reminder? You can create 2,500 appointment reminders, all named differently. And when you come to this particular one, you say, okay, I'm going to attach you know, these two, whatever, in this case, we did first and second reminder attached to it. Same thing with sur rating survey after the call, you can attach whichever one is appropriate for this particular type of appointment. And you can also do the same with follow-up. So, these are all going to be then automated. And again, I'll show you real quick how those are, are created. They're all going to be automated, but they're attached to, tip, to specific types of appointment. And hopefully you're getting, you know, they understand while this is simple to do, you don't start to have the ability to really control your environment, your uh, appointment setting environment, and make it, you know, back to that 80 to 90% success rate. Uh, so the other part of this then is the resources. And this is really, you know, kind of the secret sauce of ours. We realized, you know, very uh, after our experiences and very early on that it's really not about hours of, in the day that are available. It's about hours of the day that a person is available that has the skill set that's needed. And so that's why we created a the ability to assign uh, resources to job types, and it can be multiple job types. Um, let's see what we do. do this one here. And this basically, you're creating a, a resource, you're putting his name, you're putting whatever description you want. You put in an email, that email is necessary because they're, they're going to get, um, you know, an email when an appointment is set that they're assigned to, right? When when that's scheduled for them, they'll get an, either an appointment type or if they're using our field app, it'll go into their, into their field app. And then you select 
what appointments uh, this person can work. So in this case, we have five different appointment types. And in this case, they can work installations and they can do Wayne service calls. Okay. And then the last part is you pick, select what is going to be the time, days and times uh, blocks that they're associated with. Um, and I, I, I think I forgot to say that, you know, we're talking about right now in this particular case, um, set time blocks. You can also do exact time in, in 30 minute increments. So we set that up during the setup process. It's either or, you don't want to change back and forth. If you do decide you want to change from one to the other, we do that uh, in the database behind the scenes because otherwise it, you, you would create a mess for yourself. So we set that up in front and, and you if you want to go with uh, exact time, like I said, you could do hourly or um, as small as 30 minute uh, time blocks. And then, you know, when you select uh, some a day, it's going to start off at saying, okay, he can do everything. Well, then you just go in and click now that emergency calls we're just going to do on weekends. And I just want this to be afternoons. And then you just save that. And that's now made of uh, those time slots have been made available. Um, let me see, what else do we need to talk about there? Okay, so the other thing I wanted to, the other, you know, major concern uh, for mostly for companies, but also for, you know, customer scheduling, they don't want to uh, be in a situation where they've double booked, right? Now, we can create, there's some customers are like, I like to overbook because of cancellations, right? Like our airlines, airlines love overbooking, <laughs> but, but we're not, but anyway, you can, over, well, there is a way we can, you can overbook and we can show you how to do that. But most time you basically more worried about, uh, um, you know, you don't want to overbook uh, so that, you know, people are inconvenienced. So, you know, as an example, in this case, um, we have an appointment set um, that was a morning appointment. So if I go in and want try to set that appointment um, and I'm going to do Wayne and I'm going to select right now, the other thing, again, it will only tell you resources that are, that have that skill set, you know, that are, that are, that are assigned to that service type. So in this simple example, that's only Bob Jones is, is that, and then it's going to show, you know, if you remember, we had an appointment set for there, so I can't, I can't set an appointment for there. And we don't have emergency calls set for this appointment. So that's the only time slot that's available. Again, avoid double booking. Now, if you had four or five different resources, that that would show up as all those different resources and each one might have different time slots available. When you set appointments, you're just gonna go in and click. If it's, if it's a, a, an existing customer, you can get, just go ahead and automatically fill in the fields and, and uh, submit your, your uh, um, and save it into the, and then you just set your, and this is another interesting thing, just to, aside from appointment setting, um, this three of these are fixed, uh, pending, scheduled, and canceled. They all do automated things in the system. The others are things we can change and add different categories so that you can actually do a, um, uh, be able to, when you go into the appointment request, you can, you can, funnel these in a way that you can do reports on, you know, whatever is pending things uh, in certain different ways we had, but it's basically ticket management uh, that you can do and set it up the way you want to do it. Okay. So then let's, the last thing I wanted to cover, I'm, I think I'm on, on time, do it, I think if I'm not, let me know, um, is the communications aspect. So I mentioned you saw in the, it, and I'll go back to show you real quick, just as a refresher here. Uh, when we were in appointment uh, types, uh, we had these various communications that were set up. So those are those are created uh, in our settings, and there's basically um, you know four types. Appointment confirmation is is are fixed, and they're done in a setup. Um, you can do e either email or text message or both. These are customizable. Uh, length is customizable. Um, the uh, let me show you real quick so you know what I'm talking about. And this is a really simple example, but this this would be an example of an email that that uh, went to a customer. It's branded with uh, with your your logo. It can be you know as long as you want it to be. Um, it can be um, personalized. 
um, by uh, bullion codes in here that that are put in. There's a list, I don't know, 10 or 12 different ones that you can put into it so that you can personalize uh, the messaging. So in this section, you're going to set the initial uh, message, which goes when they request an appointment. It goes out immediately and says, "Got your request for whatever you you know whatever you want to say in that in that uh, in that messaging." Uh, so it's pretty simple. You don't want it to be you know this is just got your message, um, and this is also where you're going to set your CCs uh, because you're also going to get and I can show you that too. Uh, Oops, what did I do? Here we go. You're gonna get an email to those addresses uh, as well as of course being stored in your in, in the software, but you'll also get, a, get an email and a text message uh, that just tells you, oh, you got a new appointment request. So lots of communications, keeping everybody in the loop. A lot of our um, users are on mobile devices. This is 100% mobile um system and uh, and they just run their business totally from their phones uh, so they, they want to get these things when they're in the field they want to know what they're they can go schedule immediately they can respond because that's the second step in this is responding to them the customer that you in fact uh, got uh, uh, now scheduled the email so once that and that's that's this second piece down here confirmation email or confirmation um uh, text message and again the expandable text messaging i think we have set at 250 characters which is pretty good uh, it maybe actually it's more than that. i think it's up to 500 characters um so that's that's the initial you know confirmation of the email and then then we go into the next level and that's where we do the reminders and again, these reminders, you can have as many as you want. They're going to be specifically attached to different types of appointments. Um, and you basically are, you know, same thing. You're going in, creating a customized email, sending, to, saying when, how many days in front of the, uh, the appointment you want it to be um, in both email or text so that you uh, can communicate either way. And then the last... Um, is our, or not last, but our follow-up emails is the same concept. Um, you're going to go ahead and create those either uh, both through text and your uh, and your email. Same personalization, and again, you're going to create as many as these you want based on the types of appointments and the way you want to respond to things. So, giving you an enormous amount of control and flexibility. And then, you know, last and not least is that satisfaction piece. And that's where you're going to basically be going out and, and creating a uh, a message for requesting a rating, um, and and not only a rating but the uh, the ability to respond uh, to those comments. And what you can do in our system is you can create a number of stars that's basically uh, is do you consider to be a good rating and respond one way, less stars with a bad rating, and you respond a different way. Um, so I think I've gone through the basics um, and I'll ask for questions, uh, anything from my team that you want me to, to cover. I think we've gone.